Hello everyone. My name is Jenny Anderson and I live in the beautiful Niagara region of Ontario, Canada. I would like to share a few of my travel experiences with you all, hopefully to inform as well as entertain you. India is the land of my birth. I moved to Canada 55 years ago. I'd like to share my experience when I visited Calcutta a few years ago and memories of my childhood met me everywhere I went. It happened to be the monsoon season when the rains are constant and streets flood very fast. My friend and I were heading for a theater show and taxis couldn't ply the flooded streets. The only transport was the rickshaw. The rickshaw puller made sure his price was negotiated before we got on it. Bargaining is a way of life in India. And so my friend, a local, bargained the price. The man stood firm on his fare and told us, if I don't take you, you will need a new pair of shoes and that will cost you 60 rupees or more. So better to pay me the same thing. So we climbed on board and the man pulled us along the flooded street with the water level halfway up the two wheels. A tarpaulin draped around us from the top of the rickshaw protected us from the rain. When he had safely and almost dryly deposited us at the door of the theater, we gladly paid the price, $2. The next day, I went to the hairdressing salon for a shampoo and set. Because of problems with the plumbing due to the rains, the young girl washed my hair pouring water from a bucket. My bill was 50 rupees, and I gave her a tip of 15 rupees. That's about 50 cents and 30%. She looked shocked, but very pleased. And the other girls watching enviously murmured, so lucky. Now, let's go back to where my love of travel first began. It was on our honeymoon when my husband Trevor and I traveled through the awesome snow-capped Rocky Mountains for the first time. We rode out on beautiful Lake Emerald in a small boat, absolute roots. After a bit of rowing got us well away from the shore, my hubby decided he would turn around and face me in the boat. As he stood up, the boat capsized and we were floundering in the water, trying to hang on to some part of the boat, while my first concern was my purse that was floating away full of holiday money out of reach. Help came very fast and we were soon rescued, complete with purse, and we dried out in a kind person's bait and tackle shop. Emerald Lake that you see on the left was pictured on the Canadian $2 note. I kept one as a souvenir for many years when they were taken out of circulation. On our silver wedding anniversary, our daughters gave us a framed picture of Emerald Lake. It's been 50 years since that exciting day. On the right, you see the most beautiful Lake Louise. We used to do a family vacation every year. And I remember the first one was to Colorado with its picturesque mountains, gorges and rivers. We experienced the thrill 
of whitewater rafting in class six rapids, pretty rough, on the Colorado River, rushing through deep gorges where the steep, rugged rock faces high above us on either side. In the town of Boulder, just north of Denver, evening brings out the buskers and street performers, much like the boardwalk in old Quebec City, where a street entertainer is set up to perform every few yards. A fire eater or a juggler or an acrobat. One of these performers on the street in Boulder was the zip code guy. He asks his audience to call out a zip code and he promptly names the street and city to which it belongs. People try to stump him by calling out international zip codes, but he never hesitates. Rome, Nairobi, London, he knew them all. So Trevor and I thought we would throw him a curve. Trevor called out a Calcutta zip code and he replied, Namaste, is it monsoon season in Calcutta now? I gave him L2R 5M9, which is downtown in my city here. He said, is that bicycle repair shop still around the corner there in St. Catharines? The Yukon and Northwest Territories, Canada's great north, have so much to offer in breathtaking scenery and gold mining history. Dawson City Saloons serve the outrageous drink called the Sour Toe. It takes courage for a newcomer to order one. It's an alcoholic drink that has a pickled human toe in it. Bottoms up and then return the glass with the toe left in it, which is then used for the next brave drinker. In Alaska, the American Great North lies Denali National Park, the largest national park in the world, home to grizzlies and black bears, wolves, caribou, moose. There lies a small town called Chicken. The story goes that it was overrun by the ptarmigan bird at one time and the people wanted to call it Tarmigan, Alaska. However, they had trouble spelling Tarmigan, so they named the town Chicken. The train ride through the mountain passes is a must as the scenery is awesome. As the train approaches a certain point, the rails divide in two and two trains may pass each other going in opposite directions. Our guide was out for fun and told all of us in our bogey to give the other train pass passengers the moose salute as they passed us. We got ready and as soon as the other train came by, scores of fingers wiggled behind our ears like antlers with grinning faces. The first lot that passed us recoiled in shock, but they were really taken aback. But the bogey that followed it had been prepared by their guide, and we were given the most salute by a sea of smiling Japanese faces. In Fairbanks, my dream of seeing the Aurora Borealis came true. The breathtaking northern lights dancing across the sky filled me with joy. Imagine floating in a steamy mineral hot spring and looking up at the midnight sky, watching the display of colorful curtains of luminous lights flash in waves. I have been a travel agent for 40 years. 
I was very excited to be on a travel agent familiarization cruise one year. It was on an expedition ship sailing from Quebec to the Arctic. My husband was working on a project in Montreal and I was with him at the time. This was not going to be the usual fancy ocean liner, but an adventure with basic comforts. What thrilled me was the destination. So I overlooked the lack of fancy amenities. This is what we were looking forward to seeing and experiencing, Arctic wonders. You see the Arctic owl on the right and the polar bear and the ice flows. And there you have the Arctic hare. On day three, we sailed into Kujuwak, an Inuit town in Nunavik, a population of two and a half thousand. We had reached the Arctic. Transport by snowmobile, dock sled, small plane or canoe was the only connection to other communities. Long days with four hours of darkness during the summer solstice and four hours of sunshine in the winter describes the seasons very well. My excitement to be experiencing this unique destination came to an end with a mighty jolt. The ship got stuck on a sandbar in the harbor and we were stranded on a listing vessel. For two days, the captain tried to dislodge it and sail out at high tide, but it would not budge and became more embedded at low tide. While in that predicament, Zodiacs took us to shore where we walked to the little town out in the countryside. A guide, carrying a rifle accompanied us. The firearm was to protect us from danger, notably the wolves, which roamed wild. On the third day, the decision was made to abandon ship. We were all flown back to Montreal and my airport shuttle dropped me at the apartment at midnight. I crept into the bedroom as silently as I possibly could, so as not to awaken Trevor. At dawn, he stirred and turned towards me, still supposedly half asleep. He murmured, oh, Francine. We are very, very fortunate to be living in this part of the world where we can experience such beautiful natural wonders and scenery. Even as we speak, the countryside is ablaze with fall colors. This is a scene 10 minutes from St. Catharines, driving along the Niagara Parkway. Here we have cottage country in Ontario, the Muskokas. And now back home to my favorite city. St. Catharines is known as the garden city and it's in the region of Niagara. All around us are orchards and vineyards. Montebello Park with a gazebo and a bandstand is the venue for festivals, rip fest, concerts and the annual grape and wine festival. A delightful rose garden blooms every summer. Montebello Park, interestingly enough, was designed by the eminent architect, Frederick Law Olmsted, whose great achievements include New York's Central Park, Montreal's Mount Royal, and the grounds of the White House. A prestigious site in St. Catharines is Salem Chapel, 
which was founded in 1820 by African-American freedom seekers. It marks the end of the Underground Railway, which was neither underground nor a railway. It was a passage to freedom for slaves in the USA and the most well-known conductor was Harriet Tubman. She made 19 trips over a period of 10 years and saved 300 captives. She had a home opposite the chapel and attended services there. From our living room window, we have a close and clear view of Salem Chapel. This is Burgoyne Bridge. It's seen as, it's seen as one approaches St. Catharines. We are an exciting 15 minutes away from the world famous Niagara Falls. When we first moved here 40 years ago, we drove there every weekend, strolling past the Horseshoe Falls, on the Canadian side. From here, one gets a magnificent panorama of the American Falls as well. It always feels very special to be up close to the majestic site and to be in the honeymoon capital of the world. We join the tourists on the Maid of the Mist that sails close to the base of the falls. The plastic ponchos provide protection from the heavy spray from the falls. Visitors can take the tour and walk through the tunnels behind the falls and ride the aero car and cable car that swings over the Whirlpool Gorge. Picnicking at Dufferin Islands, very close by, delighted our little girls as they joined other children playing in the water. Some Sundays, was spent across the Canada-USA border at Art Park in Lewiston, New York. Art Park is a state park overlooking the Niagara River Gorge. There were live shows in the open air theater, art installations, and hands-on arts and crafts, which the girls loved. Now, the only time we visit the falls is when we take out of town guests for the Niagara experience, or when we drive by the Festival of Lights in December. This is Niagara Falls in winter, deep frozen. And the twigs, the branches, on which the moisture freezes, create such beautiful, beautiful sights, like diamond necklaces, some of them, when you see the drops across the wires, frozen, sparkling in the light, very beautiful. I witnessed this beautiful sunrise on Lake Ontario from my daughter's home in Toronto. This is a wonderful world. And our corner of the world right here in North America is the best home of all. Thank you for accompanying me on this trip. Thank you, Carly, for your help and support. Happy trails, everyone.